Good morning, friends. Good morning. It's Saturday morning here. Hope everybody is having a great day. I am in week two of my recovery from surgery, so still limited in the woodworking that I can do. Not, you know, completely out, but I got to be careful. So uh, today I want to talk to you about one of the things that that I think has slowed my woodworking down dramatically. I've kind of alluded this to, in some of the other videos, but um, you know, given my age and the number of years I've been doing this, I, I really feel like I'm, I'm way behind where I should have been. So just wanted to kind of share this with you, let you know um, kind of where I'm coming from here. So, you know, I have always considered myself to be a humble person. Uh, and when I say humble, that means I've always uh, held my own accomplishments and my own abilities in, in fairly low esteem. Um, and at times, I, I think um, I, I've even suffered from what is known as imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome, I'm, I'm sure other people out there have, have uh, had this as well. So if you've ever been in a position where you were surrounded by people who were much better at something than you are, um, where their talents are much more obvious, um, their, their accomplishments are, are much more obvious, and you ever have the feeling that you really don't belong there, uh, meaning that uh, you, you, you really don't fit the mold, if you will. So you, you feel like you don't deserve to be in this group of people. So that, that's what has become known as imposter syndrome. So is it a big deal? No, it's not. It's just it's something that a lot of people feel, and, and I think most people at some time have felt it. So if you've ever been given any kind of award or recognition for accomplishments or inclusion into a group where you don't feel like you deserved it or whether you felt like you belong there, then that would be called you know, Im imposter syndrome. Um, so, you know, I, I think the first time I ever noticed that was when I went off to college. So I grew up in a very small town, central Florida, surrounded by, you know, um, close friends, family, um, you know, people who loved me, probably even protected me up to a certain point, and, and always considered one of the, quote, smart kids. Uh, once I got to college, all of a sudden I was surrounded by kids that were way smarter than me, way more accomplished than, than I was. Um, and, you know, I, I really started to feel like I didn't belong there because, you know, these kids were so much better than I was at, at what we were doing. Um, and at the time, um, you know, I really didn't recognize the, the gift that I had been given, um, surrounded by these amazing kids that were absolutely the best at what they did. Um, and rather than accepting that as a, a gift and as a blessing, I, I really ended up shrinking into my own insecurities and, and you know, withdrawing and, College became a struggle for me, but it was a struggle that I kept hidden and that I kept, that I chose to uh, go through on my own. All right. So this has kind of played out in uh, numerous times where, um, you know, I've, I've been surrounded by people that were well accomplished and, and I became insecure and, and kind of closed off and, and, and didn't want, want to share. Um, and, and I'm assuming we've all been there. I know I've, I've been there. So, you know, have, have any of you ever um, uh, gone through a similar situation? But here recently, um, and by the way, I, I always assumed or, or always believed that that insecurity and that, that uh, low self-esteem, if you will, was a sign of humility that I was humble, that I did not take, um, see myself in a prideful way. 
starting to change that a little bit now. And then I'm, I'm actually starting to wonder or, or even think about the fact that is the fact that I was not willing to reach out to people and ask for help a sign of pride rather than a sign of humility. Okay. So we've all heard the saying, um, you know, pride goes before the fall. Uh, it, it comes from the Bible and the, the verses actually pride goeth before destruction, the haughty look before fall. You know, we, we've made the common term pride goes before a fall. And, and the Bible has lots to say about pride and how much uh, God dislikes pride and, and how bad pride is for a person. Right. So to for me to even think about the fact that I was engaging in prideful behavior, well, that, that really kind of hurts my heart. That, that stings a little bit. To think about that, but but now as as I as I really think through and 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 look back now that I've got all these years behind me, I look back and I see see things that I could have and should have done differently. And that's not the same as having regrets. That's just you know um, analyzing what has gone on in the past, but uh, recognizing that there are things I could have done differently that would have caused my progression in anything, and, and woodworking is only one example, but it caused my progression to have actually accelerated. Um, is that is that a form of pride? All right, so what has this got to do with woodworking? I mean, if you've signed, uh, signed on to this podcast, you, you're, you're actually wanting to hear about woodworking. So what is what has this got to do with work, woodworking? So the first question that you have to ask is what is the single biggest or single fastest way to improve your woodworking? So what is the single fastest way to improve your woodworking? And you might say things like, well, get out in the shop and practice. Okay. And that's a good thing. Don't, don't, you've got to practice. You, you've got to put the time in. So that's a good thing. Um, watching YouTube videos. I've done lots of that. So watching YouTube videos is certainly a way to learn. Reading books. Uh, reading, there's some excellent books out there on woodworking that you could read. Now, in, any number of, of woodworking magazines that, that you could subscribe to and read. All of those are, are, are excellent ways to help improve your woodworking. But the single fastest way to improve woodworking is to surround yourself with people who are better than you. Okay, that means joining a club, a woodworking club, finding an experienced woodworker who has been there, has the tools and the expertise and things like that that can guide you and help you in as you go along. Okay, um, so these are all. I mean that that is that is the best way, you know. So what's what stops people? What stands in the way of most people being able to do that? Well, first of all, you have to admit that um, you're not the best. Not only do you have to admit that you're not the best, you have to accept the fact that you're not the best and that you're not even close to the best, all right? You also, and, and I guess it, it goes further than that, okay? You have to admit that you are below average and that when you're just starting out, particularly when you're just starting out, your woodworking sucks. Okay. They just no doubt about it. They, and we've all been there. You know, every one of us that started the first time we cut a board or the first time we did any activity, it was terrible. It was terrible. Okay. But we've all been there. We've all done that. So you have to acknowledge that your woodworking is not where you want it to be. So that's that's really 
important. Okay. Now the next thing, and uh, this is super hard. This, I mean, this is incredibly difficult to come to grips with is no one cares. No one cares that your woodworking looks like a beginner. Okay. Nobody cares that your woodworking sucks. Okay. And that's not a bad thing. Okay. What they care about is that you are out there engaging in something that you enjoy and that you have a desire to improve and they don't care that you are an absolute beginner. Okay. Now this, I mean, this concept right here, this, this just this freaks me out, by the way, you know, you know, you're trying to get over the fact that nobody cares, nobody judges, nobody really um, is going to criticize you for being a beginner. You know, exactly the opposite. Every woodworker that I know, um, and, and I hate to get into too many generalizations, but I know a lot of woodworkers, and every woodworker I know is not only willing, but they're very eager to celebrate your successes as a beginning woodworker. From that very first cut through the, the wonky box that you build that's out of square, all the way up to a fine piece of furniture, they are willing to support you and encourage you and help you along the way. Okay. Now I say this looking backwards, and this is what I wish I had known and embraced so many years ago is to have surrounded myself or at least gotten involved with people that could have helped me, encouraged me, given me direction. Okay. So what I decided to do at that time was to, when I was just starting woodworking is I bought some tools and 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 just got out in the garage and plugged away and what that mean is i had to figure out everything by myself okay and that is the absolute slowest way that you could possibly improve so there's a lot of things that i never did figure out and i'm just now trying to figure out all these these years later okay so if you can accept the fact that no one cares that your woodworking is a beginner level. If you can accept that, and if you are willing to let people see that, okay, if you're let, willing to let people see the fact that you are not an experienced or competent woodworker, that they are going to accept you they are going to help you and they are going to enjoy, you know, the process of getting, helping you to the next level. Okay. So this is something I just, I, I just thought about, not even in my notes here. So this is a freebie for you. All right. If we, as beginning woodworkers in any, any sense, if, if, if a beginning woodworker is not willing to ask for help and allow other people to help are we in some way denying that other person the joy and the pleasure of being able to help okay so if, if you think about it in terms of blessings are we are we denying other people the opportunity to bless us with their knowledge and with their their skill okay so think about that. All right. So the title of this message is Be the Idiot. Where, where does that come from? Some of you have probably heard the name Simon Sinek. I'm not sure that's how you pronounce his name, but he, he, I watch some of his videos every now and then. Um, and he is known for helping companies uh, improve their culture in business, um, relation, in relationships, and, and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I, I've watched a few of his videos. It's not something I watch often, but there, there's one thing in particular that, 
really stood out to me. And, and I watched a video clip. It wasn't even the whole, the whole lecture he gave, but a, a video clip where Simon says, you need to be willing to be the idiot in the room. Now, the way he, he parsed this out, or the way he, he uh, set this up is that he was in a board meeting and somebody was making a presentation and he didn't understand it and he kept asking questions and, and really showed his ignorance of, of the subject. Um, and at the end of the presentation, other people came up to him and said, hey, you know, I appreciate you asking those questions because I didn't understand it either. And so by being willing to be the idiot, and that really does not mean be an actual idiot. What it means is you need to feel like the idiot. So if you are willing to put yourself on display and feel like you are the idiot in the room, then that not only helps yourself, but helps other people. And other, because other people probably have the, the same question. So, so when I, I relate this to woodworking or I apply this concept to woodworking. I think, you know, how does that help us as woodworkers? And the reality is that if somebody goes to a club for the very first time, especially as a beginner, there's the real possibility that they're going to feel like the idiot because you're going to be surrounded by people with years of experience, a, a, fully equipped shop that they have accumulated over years, okay? You don't just wake up and, and have a, a fully equipped shop because that's very expensive. You have to accumulate your tools and equipment over years. Hey, if you're willing to put yourself in that position and say, I don't know how to do this. I am a, an absolute beginner and I need help. That means you feel like the idiot in the room. But if you are willing to do that, then so often these people are going to, I mean, graciously and enthusiastically help you. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you have to be a, even a club, uh, you know, clubs are great. Um, and, and it's, there's the, the fellowship, the, the socialization, as well as the skill building and things like that. But it could be as simple as finding a woodworker near you that um, has some experience and has some stuff and, and asking them if they can help you. And very rarely, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it happens, but I don't know of a case very rarely people will say no, but the vast majority of time people are going to say yes, and they're going to like it, they're going to enjoy it, and you're going to enjoy it, and your woodworking is going to move along much faster. All right, so going back to the question of humility versus pride, okay? So, you know, I, I really, after all these years, I have really come to the conclusion that if you are not willing to ask for help, if you are not willing to, to say, you know, I need help, that is absolutely a form of pride. Okay? So your problem in that case isn't the fact that your woodworking sucks. It isn't the fact that your woodworking skills are below average. The, pro the problem is that you are suffering from pride. Now, in this case, pride does not mean that you think highly of yourself. What pride means is that you are not willing to let people see you for where you are today, that you want them to see you for where your ultimate goal is or where you want to be in the future, okay? 
So if you're not willing to let people see you for what you are today, then I have I've really come to the conclusion that that is a form of pride. Now, I'm not I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself here, if you will, because because I'm reflecting on my own woodworking and other not just woodworking but other activities where. I have not been willing to let people see me where I am today, but where I, I want to be in the future. And that's, that's a form of pride. Right? So the, the important thing here is I let my embarrassment of being a beginning woodworker years ago, my embarrassment of being a beginning woodworker stop me from engaging with people that could have helped me along the way okay and if you're just beginning if you're just getting started in, in your woodworking do not make that mistake and, and i don't care what age you are you know whether you're uh you know a, a kid uh engaging in in some kind of camp activity or whether you're a young adult or even a retiree who's looking to do something else, all right? Talk to somebody that can help you along your journey. Do not make the same mistake that I made, okay? So when I started this channel, I knew that I would be putting myself, and this is one of the reasons I started the channel was um, to kind of force me to put my somewhat questionable woodworking skills on on display because this this was a, a a way to grow my skills and put it out there so when, when you're watching the channel you're probably going to say eh, some of that stuff you know kind of sketchy and that's probably true right but as we go along in this journey together what we'll say is that you know, I'll put out resources that I find helpful, you know, aka Paul Sellers, um, and some others out there that, that do a re really good job teaching. So I'll be sharing those resources, and I hope that others out there, as you're finding resources, that uh, you will, you know, come in and apply that uh, or share that, and, and you know, therefore we're, we're all growing together. And, you know, for those of you that are out ahead of me on this journey, those of you that have already arrived at your, your fine woodworking skills and, and just doing some, some amazing work, you know, congratulations. Um, that's where I want to be. And I'm asking for your help to guide me along and point the way. Point the way not only for me, but for others out there. Okay. All right, if you have stuck with me this far and listened to me talk for 20 some odd minutes of, about my woodworking journey, I, I really appreciate that. I thank you very much for that. Um, but I would ask that, that uh, maybe you like and subscribe to the video. I don't ask for that very often, uh, but that would help me grow the channel and uh, uh, reach some more people. So I really do appreciate that. So uh, again, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for being here. Take care and God bless.